All right, so I made some promises that I was going to do some videos and requested that you guys tell me what you wanted to see. And one of those requests was uh, how to use the data logging software. And so I figured I would make a quick video about how to use the data logging software and try to see whatever it is you need to see. Uh, first things first, you got to open a data log. And uh, right now I've got a tune pulled up. You can also open a data log whenever you open the software. Um, but if you're already in your tune, uh, this is typically where I start out with because I want to be able to see uh, in the tune file where I'm looking in the data log. So uh, here's an example. Go up here to data log. I usually click the little drop down menu and click open data log. Wherever you find your data log is, is fine. Uh, in this case, uh, I have a data log in a, in a convenient place that I'll pull up here. So, this was a trip to the drag strip. Let's just do an NA pass to start with. Um, this is the green nitrous cars tune and uh, data log from a trip to an eighth mile track. And so right off the bat, you can kind of see what you're going to open up to is basic fuel. And that's a pretty common, pretty common thing to start with. But uh, I do want to, before we get too deep into how to use the actual screen, I want to show you what these menus do. So most of these are canned from Holly. Uh, I think I created this nitrous one. I can't remember. It's really up to you, whatever you want to have. But um, the main thing here is you can click Edit Views right here and brings up this screen. So each one of these eight options are different sets of parameters that you may want to see whenever you're tuning a specific, um, let's call it region of the tune. Uh, this is obviously fuel, timing, idle and cold start, excel enrichment, all these different things um, can be tailored to you know, a handful of different parameters that are important to those. So you can't put more in here than you have space for. Like I still have room down here, still have room right here. Uh, nitrous is full, idle cold start, excel is full, basic fuel is full. Um, these different boxes uh, can max out, and I have at times found that to be a little annoying, but ultimately it's really easy to switch over to a, a different tab and find whatever you needed. So just for an example, let's work in basic fuel here for a second. Um, let's say what's something that I don't have that I wish that I had. Uh, fuel pressure is already in there. Let's just... Um, Let's throw a closed loop status in there. So output two is something that's not currently used in this tune that I was using for another tune. Uh, and you can mix and match this stuff. You can change it on the fly as much as you want. I change this stuff all the time. So let's grab closed loop status. You literally just click it, drag it over to the box you want to put it in, let go of it, and it will be there. Now if you click OK, you're going to be asked, the config has changed, would you like to save it? If you say yes here, the next time you open the software, these changes that you just made will remain in place. If you say no, it's still going to show up in your, see, closed loop status right here. It's still going to show up currently. It's just not saved for the next time that you want to open the software. So the next time that I open this up, output 2 is going to be here. Or whatever I had on that particular channel for the other tune that I was using is going to be here instead of closed loop status. So anyway, in terms of how to use this, obviously um, right now we just see a bunch of lines. There's nothing in here that really makes a whole lot of sense. But if you find a spot you want to highlight and, and zoom in on, if you just go to that place, click and drag, let go of the mouse button, and now I know that this is a burnout. I can tell based on what the throttle looks like, the RPM trace, all that looks like a burnout to me. So, if we go in here, zoom in a little bit more, you can kind of see here that it looks like we've got a lot of learn going on right now. See this really high value? 
We got a lot of learn going on. And then as soon as it sees a throttle input, and this is something really important for tuning and why you need to tune your, your, uh, your base fuel tables is as soon as that happens, we're going to come out of learn and our, we're going to come out of closed loop. See how our, our closed loop status is now open. So the oxygen sensor is only going to be useful for uh, steady state conditions. And whenever you have throttle actuation or, uh, you know, changing conditions inside the manifold, you really have to just flat out ignore the oxygen sensor. It's not real. Uh, it's, a, it's a bad value to go off of. Don't do that. Um, so as you can see here, we've got a little throttle movement, kind of a clutch kick, rolled up through the RPM here, let it kind of settle, and then probably clutched it and just coasted down right here. So now you've looked at what you want to see, and you go, okay, uh, now what do I do? i gotta, I got to back out of here somehow. There's these four icons up here on the top. So zoom in is pretty obvious. It's going to zoom in even farther. Zoom out is also going to zoom out some fixed amount. Zoom all is going to take you back to the entire data log compressed into this one little black screen. It's difficult to see. Zoom last is kind of interesting because it's going to go to the last zoom setting that you had before here. So let's just click that one time. And you remember that I kind of zoomed in twice on this. So keep in mind, zoom last will toggle. It will go back and forth between these two. In this situation, whenever I want to go ahead and move over to the pass, there's a couple different things I can do. I can either go all the way back out. If I click zoom all, that gives me my starting screen. I'm going to hit zoom last here because I want to go back to where I was. Now I can also come down here to the timeline. If you put your mouse over the center of the window, it's going to move the current window size. It's going to move that on the timeline. The other thing that you can do is bring your mouse to this edge and you can extend the timeline and actually kind of effectively zoom out. So I can tell here that that window is a sufficient size to fit my entire pass that's currently right here on the timeline. I'm going to grab this window and just scoot that right over to my pass. All right, so now you can kind of see right here we've got a big throttle motion. Green, This green line right here is my TPS value. We've got a big throttle motion. This section right here is all two-step rev limiter. And then we've got a kick off the rev limiter and a little bit of wheel spin and it drags its way down and we start changing gears. You can also, if you want to look at anything instantaneous during this pull, say like right here for instance, I can click that and where that cursor is at is where all of this data is current. So right now I'm at 6500 RPM, 32 degrees of timing, 94 kPa in the manifold, 100% throttle, 42 pounds of fuel pressure. You get the gist. It's it, it's going to tell me the current state of affairs. All right. That's really useful, but you're going, okay, well, Aaron, what was my max RPM in this data log? Well, I can tell you. I didn't even know about this for a long time, but you can kind of see where I highlight this bar. My mouse will go over uh, this bar and gives me the option to split this window. So I can actually click right here, drag this over, and there's all sorts of hidden statistics back here that you never knew were there. So, anyway, maximum RPM throughout the entire data log, 7546. There you go. And I don't know exactly where that happened. It's probably going to be out here somewhere. Uh, might have been first gear. Seventy-five, twenty-nine. May have been in the burnout. I'm not sure. Doesn't really matter. the The main point here is just that that's where your max is at. You got max. You got min. You have an average. Standard deviation. Uh, that's kind of outside the scope of this video. Um, that's a statistics term. And uh, if there's really a lot of interest in what standard deviation is and how it's used in this particular application, let me know and I can kind of talk to what that is. Um, but honestly, I would be giving you more of a statistics course than I would be a data logging course. And um, you really probably should just Google some people that are much better qualified to, to tell you about that for uh, on YouTube. Uh, I'm sure it's out there. Um, but anyway, the other thing I want to show you 
I'm going to go ahead and slide this back over so it's a little easier to see. The other thing I want to show you is these bars here on the left. They are toggled with this bottom checkbox. So you can turn all those off if you wanted to. What's nice about these is if you have to do any kind of um, overlaying, if you want to put two different things, a good example would be base fuel VE and estimated VE. It's really important that if you're going to overlay these guys, and you can see I've got a split window here, and I'll kind of explain how this works. Um, if you're going to overlay this stuff, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and move this down here. You double click estimated VE right there, the, the title of the thing you want to move, and we're going to move that to panel two. So right now it's on panel one right here. We're going to move it to panel two, and it's going to put it right down here as soon as I click OK. There you go. So now what I've got here is an overlay of my base fuel VE, my base map, and the highly estimated VE. Um, this is a really useful tool whenever you're, you're dialing in your base fuel table for the first time. Um, one really good example that I want to show you right here is see all this horrible, crazy mess. Look where it lines up perfect with the two-step. That's really important to note because as I was saying earlier, whenever you got changing conditions in your manifold or you got changing TPS or something like a two-step rev limiter going on where you're cutting spark and doing all sorts of crazy stuff, ignore that, ignore this area in terms of oxygen sensor. This estimated VE value is directly related to your target AFR and your commanded AFR. And it's a really useful tool in steady state conditions, but do not get sucked into just making changes these big swings they're not real anyway enough of that uh, you saw how I changed from panels you can have I think let's find it six panels maybe five panels there you go so you can have up to five panels you can put five different things on there um, one of the things that I like to do I'll go ahead and show you my nicer setup I got a lot going on here and I realize that I've got a lot going on here but the main thing is I can see everything that I need to see in one panel and see if there's something wrong right out of the gate with this nitrous setup. So on the top row here, I've got RPM, timing, TPS, map, and target AFR, all the basics. Just I want to make sure that it goes to wherever I, I think that it should go. Um, these two base fuel uh, pounds per hour and fuel pressure, they're not related, but this was the best place that I could just stick both of these where I could see where they were going. Um, obviously, fuel pressure is something that we want to see maintain a, a constant pressure throughout the, the whole pull. And so it's an easy to see just kind of a baseline across there. Uh, fuel flow, this base fuel pounds per hour, that is related to uh, like a speed density tune. Uh, this is what you would see. This value is what you would see anywhere in your uh, speed density tune-up. I use base fuel um, pounds per hour because I need to do an offset using um, the dry nitrous control. I want to be able to see what is in my fuel table because whatever I'm adding with dry nitrous fuel, which is right here, is this plus this equals this. So base fuel plus dry nitrous fuel equals my total fuel flow. That's why that's there. And then lastly, we've got bottle pressure. Uh, we've got whatever the timing change is supposed to be, any amount of closed loop comp and what my AFR is. So there's a lot going on here, and I realize that that looks really busy. Uh, it's what works for me. And the most important thing is about this particular um, you know, video is that I want you to realize that you can set this up to do pretty much whatever you, you want it to do. There's a lot of other features that are really beyond the scope of a, of a basic um, data logging video. And, and again, if there's interest, I can go into some more of that. But the main thing that I want you to see is this screen right here. This will tell you whatever it is you need to know. Holly is extremely good about, and you can don't forget you can scroll here. Holly is extremely good about giving you the information that you need in order to figure out whatever it is you're trying to figure out. Uh, it's it's really not something that you need to try to you know have some kind of weird work around. It's gonna be in here somewhere, in some way. So anyway.
That said, find what you need to know and just put it in one of these canned options. Like I said, if you if you click OK on the uh, the save, then it's going to be there when you come back. I think that's probably a good place to leave off. Just remember that Zoom All will let you see everything. And if you want to highlight a specific area, drag and click. And all your stats are hidden back here. All right, guys. Thanks a bunch. If you've got any questions, please leave me a comment.